We're going to look at two different ways that you can find out more information about a magazine or a newspaper. The first one is the Audit Bureau of Circulations at abc.org.uk. If we want to find a, an ABC certificate for a publication, you can simply use this search box here. Let's type a car magazine, classic cars. This link is to the ABC's certificate for classic cars. Here we go, view full certificate. And what that will do is produces a PDF. This is the ABC certificate for this magazine. Um, and what ABC does is it produces circulation statistics. So circulation is the number of magazines that are sold or distributed. So we can see this particular magazine over this period, the 1st of July 2013 to the 31st of December, December 2013. There were six issues, so it's a monthly. And on average, it sold or circulated 35,869 copies of the magazine. And then if we scroll down a little bit, we can get a circulation breakdown. So what this tells us is retail and single copy sales is 25,000. So the vast majority of the sales of this magazine are through news agents. Then single copy subscription sales. This is people who invest money up front for a year in advance to get the magazine sent to them in the post. 8,664. So the vast majority of the sales of this magazine are people who buy it in a newsagent or a supermarket or wherever, wherever. So what we might conclude about the magazine from that point of view is that there are a fair number of people who perhaps don't buy it every month. They might buy it most months, but they like to look at other magazines as well. So when we're planning uh, features for the magazine or when we're designing a cover for this magazine we might be thinking well we've got to do a really good job on our cover because we've got to excite people and make them want to pick up the magazine this month which perhaps they don't always do. We can get a little bit more data on the next page so we can look at not just the average circulation but we can look at whether that's in the UK 27,000 almost or in other countries. So we know from this that our audience is going to be very largely based in the UK and that has an impact on how we might write uh, a feature for the magazine. It has an impact on the kind of language we might use, the kind of uh, references to music or culture or, or anything else that we might make. Even the kind of, in this case it's a car magazine, so it might have a, an impact on the, the types of car, the makes of car that we include in our features because we know our audience is largely uh, UK. So that tells us a little bit about the circulation of this magazine. If instead we look at a different magazine, let's look at Evo, it's another car magazine. So we've got Evo there, click for the full certificate. Now Evo has a slightly higher number, 45,000 and a bit. The interesting thing is you now look at the circulation breakdown for retail sales and subscription sales. You now see retail sales for this magazine, 19,890, compared to 24,000 subscription sales. So for Evo, we have far more readers who are subscribers. So they buy the magazine every month. So that tells us something about the kind of person they are. They're somebody who's really sort of bought into the kind of things that Evo does and the way it presents its features. So what it's really saying is they really like this magazine. And so we have to make sure we're always providing them with the same sort of content. So with a magazine where there's a lot of retail sales, so from newsstands, from news agents, we might be thinking, we need to put a lot of variety in, we need to have be really creative, come up with lots of great ideas so that we can encourage people to buy our magazine. With a magazine like this one where we've got lots of subscribers, we might be thinking, well, actually the important thing is that we maintain the style and the quality of the magazine from one issue to the next because people have already decided they like it and they've invested for 12 issues or more at a time. 
So we need to make sure we maintain that level of quality and maintain that style because that's what they bought into. Now the ABC website only tells us about circulation so it tells us about how many magazines there are out there. What if we want to find out about how many readers the magazine has and how do we find out about who those readers are, what kind of people are they? We can do that using something called NRS, the National Readership Survey. So that's www.nrs.co.uk. Latest results up here and then we can look at news brands, that means newspapers, general magazines or women's magazines. So again let's look at the automotive examples we've just looked at. So we look under general magazines and we can now download either a PDF or an Excel spreadsheet for each of these periods. So let's look at the latest one. We'll look at the Excel version. There we go, and that downloads. So if I just open that up. We've got a load of numbers. Let's see if we can find one of the magazines that we looked at before. Those are weeklies, these are monthlies. So here we go. This is classic cars. So that line there is Classic Cars magazine that we looked at earlier on. This first column is telling us the total readership of this magazine. So in this case it's in thousands and it's 560,000 people. This is the estimate that NRS has made for the readership of this magazine. We then got columns here which divide that population into socio-economic groups, ABC1s, C2DEs. ABC1s are people with a lot of disposable income, C2DEs are people who either um, are not what they call economically active or they, they have less disposable income. So we can see that for Classic Cars magazine, in this case there are 273,000 readers who are in the ABC1 category and 286,000 in the C2DE category. So it's pretty evenly spread. If we looked at another magazine, for example if we look at this one, Empire, we can see Empire has 735,000 readers of which 516,000 are ABC1 and 218,000 are C2DE. So with Empire the readership is much more skewed towards the ABC1 category. So that starts to tell us something about who the readership is, who these people are and what kind of person they are. In the case of Empire on average they've got more disposable income. They're in the ABC1 category so we could do a bit of research and find out what ABC1 means but it's going to tend to mean that they've got a higher level of education. So that might have an impact on the kind of writing style that we use, the kind of language we use, the kind of vocabulary we can use. These two columns split our audience into age ranges. So we've got young people, 15 to 34, and older people, which is defined as 35 and over. So here we can see, if we look at classic cars again, 167,000 out of our readership of 560,000 are in the 15 to 34 age group. 393,000 are in the 35 and over age group. So clearly we've got a readership for this magazine which is heavily biased towards that over 35s group. And then the last two columns split our audience into men and women. And it's probably not a massive surprise for a car magazine that our audience is 472,000 men and only 88,000 women. So our audience is predominantly male. And from all of these things we can start to build up a picture of who our average reader is, what kind of spread of readership we've got amongst different kinds of people. And then we can decide how we write for them, what kind of features we produce for the magazine. We can also start to make decisions about what the magazine should look like, what kind of photography we use, what kind of design, what kind of layout.